think everybody knows of Leonardo da Vinci as, as the universal man, the typical Renaissance man interested in all different subject matter. But I hope the anatomical drawings in the totality give people an understanding that Leonardo was not simply an artist who dabbled in the sciences, that his scientific pursuits were somehow a sort of bizarre or, or curious side issue, but that his scientific studies were central to his activity and that the anatomical drawings in particular are of such quality and such sustained brilliance in some ways that Leonardo deserves to be uh, thought of as one of the great scientists of the Renaissance, uh, at least um, the equal of his status as a painter. Well, this is one of the largest and most detailed of Leonardo's anatomical drawings. It was compiled around 1509, essentially as a compilation of all his understanding of the human viscera, based primarily on dissection of a man who'd claimed to be 100 years old that Leonardo had carried out a couple of years before. And you can see several of the elements from the dissection of that centenarian. He probably had cirrhosis of the liver, and you see there's an enlarged spleen. Uh, the hepatic vessels are unusually prominent, and the umbilical vein has opened up due to portal hypertension. The heart is shown with only two chambers, uh, Leonardo's great investigation of the heart where he discovered the atria, that's still to come. Um, the aortic arch is probably bovine, it's too symmetrical for the human. It shows that Leonardo was still reliant to some degree on animal dissection. You can also see that down here in these huge ligaments that extend from the uterus sideways, which are typically bovine rather than human. But if you look closely at the uterus, you can see um, it's got seven chambers, which was a uh, traditional belief passed down from, from, from Aristotle. So within this one drawing, Leonardo is trying to crowd an enormous amount of information, um, but it's just a staging post on his, on his road to a full understanding of the human form. Throughout his career, Leonardo intended to publish his anatomical research as, a, as an illustrated treatise on human anatomy. But at his death in 1519, all his anatomical papers remained amongst his private studio possessions. And they were essentially lost from sight. So Leonardo, whereas he could and should have been one of the great figures in the history of anatomy, is essentially just a footnote. Around 1600, about 600 of Leonardo's surviving drawings were bound together in a single album. And by 1690, it was in the Royal Collection. We don't know how it came into the collection, there's no documents, but we think it was during the reign of Charles II. As a great artist, Leonardo had two advantages over his contemporary anatomists. First of all, as a sculptor, engineer, architect, he had an intuitive understanding of form. When he dissected a body, he could understand in a, in a very um, uh, fluid way how the different parts of the body fitted together, how they worked together. And then having made that understanding, as a supreme draftsman, he was able to record his observations and discoveries in drawings of such lucidity He's able to get across the form, the structure to the viewer in a way which um, had never been done before and in many cases has never been surpassed since. This is one of the sheets of studies resulting from a campaign of dissection that Leonardo carried out in the winter of 1510 probably at the University of Pavia, just to the south of Milan, where he is reported as having collaborated with a young professor of anatomy there, Marc Antonio della Torre. And the results can be seen on a page such as this, which is dense with detail. He studies the muscles of the shoulder and arm, the structure of the hand, and you see here the nerves and the arteries feeding into the hand. And here at the centre of the sheet, uh, an amazingly sophisticated dissection of the muscles of the face. And this is very, very difficult to dissect, and, and Leonardo has got it almost perfectly correct there. You can identify every single muscle. Now the drawings are surrounded by this patchwork of notes. In these he's partly explaining the drawings on the page, but also setting himself further topics that he wanted to investigate. They're sheets done for Leonardo's own record. They're not intended for anybody else to see, and consequently, he wrote in mirror image with the left hand from right to left with every word and letter in perfect mirror image throughout his life. It was simply easier for him, I think, as a left-hander. Um, if we turn the sheet over, because this is a sheet from a notebook and Leonardo compiled drawings and notes on both sides, um, you can see Leonardo's most comprehensive study of the skeleton. He's treated it almost like an architectural drawing. Um, with three elevations, mutually orthogonal angles, 
from the front, from the back, from the side. Leonardo's last, and in many ways his finest, campaign of anatomical investigation was into the structure of the heart. Working mainly with an ox's heart, he dissected it to an extraordinarily fine level of detail, and the sheet of studies you see here is an investigation of the functioning of the aortic valve. Now, Leonardo realised that at the root of the aorta was a slight um, swelling, a sort of chamber, which we now call the sinus of Valsalva, and he wanted to investigate the function of this. So he injected molten wax into the aorta, and it set, and he could see this bulb shape when he dissected it away. And then he made a glass model around that wax cast, and he shows it in cross-section here. And then he could pump water with a suspension of grass seeds through his glass model and observe these vortices in the sinus immediately above the aortic valve. And he deduced that these vortices played a crucial role in the opening out of the cusps of the valve after each pump of the heart. And it's absolutely right. It's only in the 20th century that um, cardiologists basically agreed with Leonardo that the vortices in the sinus of Balsalva are crucial for the function of the aorta. It's, it's the most incredibly sophisticated piece of investigation and shows Leonardo as an experimental scientist at his absolute best. <laughs>